and welcome to this session at the Disruptive Innovation Festival. My name is Colin Webster and I'm one of the education team here at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Today is the last day of the diff, um, which doesn't mean that there's nothing else to see at Think Diff from tomorrow onwards. We'll have something like 270 sessions online that you can catch up on. Uh, so that they'll be available for the next 30 days. So we've planned your next 30 days for you. Lots of great sessions to catch up on. All sessions that investigate ideas uh, that are reshaping the economy, don't they, Ken? Absolutely. And um, talk about the economy, I suppose this is where we come in. Well, I think actually we probably should talk about these hats we're wearing first. Well, perhaps we should. Yeah, yeah. Right. people will be wondering why these are on our heads. So today at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, because it's the last day of the diff, we decided to have a wear a silly hat day to work. And uh, here we are uh, with matching hats. So um, if you're wondering, now you know. Um, this session is interactive, like all of the sessions we've run at the Disruptive Innovation Festival, which means we want your thoughts and comments to come in, and there's two ways you can do that, or rather there's three ways. Number one, on the Think Diff website that you're probably watching this on, there's a comment section underneath, put your questions and comments in there, we'll make sure they go through to today's speaker. Number two, if you're watching this in the Google Hangout app, then there's a Q&A function, which I'm about to turn on, and you can uh, ask us through there. Or number three, you can tweet at us using hashtag thinkdiff. Our little uh, gremlins will be look, watching all, all of those different uh, sites to see the comments and questions that come in. But Ken, over to you. Why are we here today? Why are we here? Because we need to talk about the economy and particularly about unemployment. Between 2008 and 2013, something like 10 million Europeans lost their jobs. In August 2014, 24.6 approximately million men and women were unemployed. 5 million of whom are young persons, which I assume to me under 25. This information was from uh, XTAX, who we're going to talk to in a moment. But if we think about a circular economy where the flows of resources are improved, they're more effective, people can be more industrious, that, which sounds good, how do we pay for all that extra labor? How do we make sure that that labor is productive? Femke uh, from XTAX have a, has a few interesting ideas, a, a lot of interesting ideas, actually. And she's the president of the Dutch organization, XTAX. Uh, she also likes to be known as a, a wave maker, which is, I was waiting to have to say that, and which I enjoy it very much. Uh, so Femke, a wave maker, here's the first question. You know, taxes is not a particularly popular subject, so why are you so interested in taxes, and why should anybody else be interested in taxes? Hi, Ken and Colin. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, well, taxes are the basic rules of the game in the economy. And if you want to play a different game, which the circular economy really is about, then you have to change the rules of the game. Um, so changing taxes is a fundamental solution to fundamental issues, and that's what I like about it. Awesome. Okay, so uh, today's session, the first thing we're going to give our viewers is a little task. A little task we're going to give you is to go and visit a website. We'll put the URL up on the screen right now. We're going to ask you to go to that address um, and watch a video. Uh, don't close down the, the uh, page you're watching this on, though, or you'll lose us altogether. That's not a good idea. Um, so open up a new tab in your browser and go to tinyurl.com forward slash difftax. And if uh, you're lazy, you might want to go to the hyperlink that you'll find on the ThinkDiff website. It's just um, underneath the uh, just underneath the picture you're viewing this in. Uh, you'll see a comment section. Click on that hyperlink, and that will take you to um, a particular page. Um, on that page, you'll find a bunch of floating circles. There's a blue circle in the middle we want you to click on. Um, and within that, there you'll find a six-minute-long video uh, where Femke is explaining the idea of X-Tax. So um, please head for that address right now, tinyurl.com forward slash difftax, and that will take you off to um, our website. In fact, I'm going to show you what that looks like, just so I can quickly screen share um, here, here, and here. So the page will look a bit like this, and um, we want you to look at the blue circle in the middle. Click on that, and then watch the video. We'll see you on the other side. Yeah, we'll see you in about six minutes, folks. Uh, go watch that video, just that one, and uh, we'll see you back here in about five or six minutes, okay?
Okay, people should be more or less finishing up watching that video just now. We'll just wait another 10 seconds or so. Right, Ken, I reckon it's time. We I reckon got... it's time for more questions. I reckon it is. And uh, for people who watch this video online just now, I'm sure you've got one or two questions lined up for Femke. Apologies if we interrupted your viewing of that video, but um, you've got the URL for it, so you can go back and watch it. And of course, you can see there are other resources on that page as well, all related to x -tax, and uh, they're well worth having a browse through. Ken wants to ask you the first question of the day, FMK, but just before he does, a reminder, people can put questions in on the ThinkDiff webpage, uh, and we'll put those questions direct to you. Ken. Okay, thanks very much. FMK, what sort of level out of the total tax take are resource taxes at the moment? You know, what's the scale of the ambition? You know, how, what level are resource taxes compared to taxes on income or taxes on consumption? Right. At the moment in Europe, 51% on average based on labor. That includes contribution. And 6% um, is what we call green tax, generally on mobility and energy. But just a fraction of all tax revenue on natural resources and pollution, only 0.3%. So that gives you an idea of you know, the weight of each of the uh, topics in the tax system. Yeah, given that it's fairly much a no-brainer, and, and, and if you want to get more people employed, why do you tax them? Why not tax uh, resources, as you say? So, you know, what's really behind the resistance? Because I think resource taxes have even fallen as a percentage over recent decades. So, what, what's really behind the resistance here? Right, I think there's a few reasons for, for the fact that it's not been implemented yet. Um, first of all, the concept is very simple, tax resources and not labor. But uh, when you start thinking about it, about implementation, it becomes quite complicated. And people will get all sorts of questions about the scale and the international effects, etc. So although the concept is very simple, um, working it out is, is complicated. Also, there has been a lack of sense of urgency uh, with regard to the environmental megatrends as well as uh, unemployment. So the attention to em environmental top problems wasn't as, as, as high as it is now. So the idea has been around to shift taxes for 20 years or more, um, but um, uh, currently we're seeing a major uh, increase in the number of people who are aware of the environmental environmental megatrends and who are willing to support this, this subject. But third of all, what, is, what has happened over the, over the last two decades is the role of business has changed a lot. So before, um, business may have been um, a, a counterfactor uh, countering this, this tax shift, but currently what we see is that really every business in every sec sector is developing sustainable business models. And um, the interest of business is changing, therefore. And now uh, there's a lot more support for this idea than there was maybe 20 years ago. Okay, but it's curious to me, is this um, coming through yep. right? It's rather curious to me why, they, why, why businesses have become more interested in, in this approach. Because, is it because the proportion of resources in their business has fallen or risen or... What, what's, why, why are they more interested, or is it just that we know we've got to have a circular flow of income, and uh, if people are not employed, they're not spending money on goods and services? Well, why do you detect a shift there? It's, I don't think it's just the environment, is it? I mean, no, it's both sides of the coin, really. But um, so the thing is, um, international global businesses are currently experiencing the effects of these environmental megatrends, climate change, supply risks, um, water scarcity. I mean, there's, there's not, a, not a company in the world that can simply build a new factory anywhere without assessing whether there will be water or whether you know, it is, is, it prone, is, is risk uh, prone to, uh, to climate change and rising sea levels, etc. So um, there have been a number of, of developments. I mean, the CDP, this carbon disclosure, previously carbon disclosure project, has helped a lot 
in pushing forward to have data available and information, and strategic information uh, from businesses, what their strategy is on climate change. Um, there's business leaders, particular persons who have been very much pushing for, for, for the agenda of climate change, um, for example. But it's, it's, in the, it's in their daily interest to understand the long-term availability of, of natural resources um, as well as the, the, the role of, of people in these economies. So um, seeing poverty, seeing um, 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 human rights violations, etc., businesses are mu much more aware of the impact that they have on society. And they're looking for ways to measure and actually manage the, the, these impacts. And we're certainly not there yet. Um, we're only at the beginning of that process, I think. But already, that's much different than maybe 20 years ago. Okay, that's, that's really helpful. I'm wondering about the politicians, though, um, just to, to switch from the business to the politicians. This seems, again, something that I would imagine many politicians would get behind because it means more jobs for their constituents and for their country. But I don't see a lot of agitation around that. Um, can you locate some of the barriers in the political sphere? Is it just habit, for instance? We've always taxed people, well, at least since the beginning of the 20th century. It's easy to do. Why stop? Is it that question, or is it something more? It's The um, problem is that um, it, it change is painful for people, and especially in, in fiscal matters, um, changing the rules of the game is, 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 is a scary thing to do because it, it People think it's becoming less predictable. Um, so that is one issue. Uh, in governments, as I said, as these companies are so much aware of their supply chains currently, often government, people in government are not yet aware of these risks. They, they, um, so the global view on, on, um, on natural resources is, is often missing. The, uh, national leaders have a national perspective, and so sometimes they miss what's going out beyond the borders. Um, so uh, I, I think there's, a, in, in Europe at least, um, a lot of support for or, or wish to lower taxes on labor. In fact, um, the European Commission has been calling uh, for member states to, to lower taxes on labor for, for 20 years now, at least. And um, the IMF is, uh, is advising this also for the net to the Netherlands, for example, and Belgium with extremely high uh, taxes on labor. Um, but as I said, environmental topics are not that high on the agenda at, at governments. And so the shift is not really perceived as an option yet. And, so, and that's why we focus on getting businesses on board, better understand the dynamics of a tax shift on their business models and their strategies so they can help government understand what the impact is of anticipated policies so that government is is well aware of um, of the or, or better understands the dynamics of, of policy measures okay uh, Carolyn I think you wanted to yeah in. sure talking to policy measures so your report new era new plan I think it was called is uh, looking at the Netherlands, and I think it con concluded their savings were something in the region of 30 million euros. But is it really possible for one country to go it alone and to implement a tax policy like this? Mm -hmm. So yes, we um, we did a study together with um, Deloitte, EY, KPMG, Maybrook, and PwC uh, for during a few years, and uh, we we put forward the question. Just imagine you could. Um, shift taxes to the amount of 30 billion euros, how would you do that in the Netherlands? And really that's not because the Netherlands can simply do that, but we wanted to paint the picture of where this shift could go and what the, the, the big gains are also in, in terms of lowering labor costs. So um, the Netherlands and any other country can take steps in this direction but uh, a single nation can't change the whole system because there's border issues, etc. There's international trade, etc. So um, um, we're not saying that one country could do that, but we are saying um, let's work out a long-term roadmap uh, on how we want the tax system to de to develop, and then join forces and 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 help each other um, 
making these plans and uh, implementing them step by step. That's oh, super, thanks. And actually, I see that Sylvia, one of the online audience, asked a very similar question. So I'm not sure if she beat me to it or the other way around. I've just spotted it now. Thanks for that, Sylvia. Yeah, but can we just add in the bottom bit from her question, which is quite good. Uh, in the EU, there are some problems about designing your own tax system. Uh, you know, there are certain rules about how far you can run a deficit, for instance, or how far you can do certain things. So would it be any use for Greece is the question there. How about testing it for Greece uh, to help them? Would you think x tax could, uh, or have you been speaking yeah. to Greece about this? That's a good question. Yeah, at the moment we are developing an EU scenario. So we're trying to figure out what this looks like on uh, the level of 28 countries, as well as the macroeconomic impacts and uh, impact on carbon emissions, <coughs> employment, GDP growth, etc. Um, this requires, uh, first of all, to have a good scenario that is that that works in every every country, more or less, and then it requires a modeling exercise that shows the impact. So uh, we're absolutely looking at that, and um, yeah, I think the countries with the highest unemployment rates, for example, could have a high interest in in, in doing this. Spain as well, with a, an almost 50 percent uh, unemployment youth unemployment. Um, it could work very well, very well there. Mm -hmm. Colin, did you want to? Yeah, certainly. Uh, okay, so what what are the main barriers then to implementing an idea like this? You've talked about how it, it really couldn't be done in one country. Are there other barriers uh, to implementing a tax shift? Yeah, besides that one about well, you know, people have just think in a habitual way, and it's just yeah. scary to do change. Is there anything uh, perhaps deeper than that? I mean. Do certain uh, certain interests really see a great advantage in making sure um, that the um, the opportunities for getting tax breaks for implementing uh, capital equipment or um, new energy systems? Absolutely. Like that, that rolling along because you know the displacement of labour keeps happening. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. The the, the forces that are, want to keep things as they are are huge, but uh, you know, being active in the in the field of circular economy, we, we tend to see a lot of great examples of of, uh, of changes going on and new interest emerging. Uh, we see businesses that uh, are are asking governments to actually put a price on carbon emissions, for example, um, in the run towards Paris in in December. Um, we see um, more than a thousand businesses. Are currently working uh, with a, a fictitious carbon tax rate. So when they do investment decisions, they take into account a, a certain price on carbon in order to improve their long-term decision making. So even you know they're not waiting for governments to arrange this. They 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 they're ahead of the game. So um, yeah, you're absolutely right. There there are and there have been big forces against changing tax law. But um, um, I think we have to do a good job at explaining why this is so good, so necessary, and what it will bring. Um, and and I'm I'm fairly comfortable, of, um, um, sure that uh, it'll it'll you know be in, in more fertile soil, let's say, than than a couple of decades ago. Yeah, excellent. Uh, a related question, I suppose, is. Will it raise enough money? I'm sure that's been asked and you've looked at that in your report, but it might be nice to get your current view on that, particularly because if the tax means that we conserve resources better, the tax take would fall, or do you expect a rising level of tax uh, even when resources are used more carefully? Uh, how, do, how do you play with that idea that if it's successful, you get less tax? Yeah. And that's a worry many people have in government as well. Um, so the thing is, this is exactly the mechanism that is happening right now. Since we're taxing labor, uh, labor is expelled from the workplace, and we get less um, income for government. So the exact uh, that, that mechanism is, uh, mechanism is happening right now. Um, in future, if we have a more sophisticated tax system that is more in tune with, uh, um, let's say. Um, the, the mega trends of our, of our time, then um, the tax system will need to adapt 
constantly to adapt to changing circumstances. And this is why we developed a policy toolkit that shows all the buttons that governments can push to bring taxes down on labor and up on natural resources and consumption. So either one of these boxes are not going to be enough for us to change fundamentally our economies, um, but jointly they can. So if, for example, carbon is uh, re carbon emissions are reduced, um, then just like we do now with labor taxes, you raise um, um, uh, you raise the prices on on this item, or you um, expand the tax base. And that is what our tax policy toolkit uh, helps identify all these options. Okay. Um, one thing that really interests me is culturally, really, how come the, the Dutch in particular are so good at trying out some new ideas? Because you see a lot of initiatives in the circular economy and in your tax changing and in the way, say, even Ship All Airport is developing that's often very innovative. Is there a cultural element to this? Do you think you're ahead of the game because of something in your history or the way you work? Even systems like open space, where they let the um, the traffic flow in a town without many markings or furniture, it's it's again the Dutch that are doing it. And if it is something in in the culture there, just playfully, does that mean that some countries might be expected to be quite way behind with this? You know, what's how's the pace of change going to going to reflect some of these cultural variables if they if they exist? Um, I'm not. I'm not quite sure the Dutch are so much uh, sort of advanced in this um, um, because there are great things happening all across Europe. I think um, um, I'm not sure. There are a number of uh, Dutch multinationals, for example, that are that rank very high on, on sustainability indexes. Uh, that might give them a push or, or a better understanding of the field and also a wish to to adapt. Um, we have a number of uh, businesses that somehow uh, are, are, are led by very advanced leaders that are um, very open open to, to change as well. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's a Dutch thing or um, I, I'm not sure. I can't answer that question. I think <laughs> yeah. so that's, a, that's a bad question, really. Then, if uh, <laughs> if somebody like you can't uh, or doesn't want to play with it, so I'll try a, a better question. And I hope. What other sort of um, tax shifts or ideas have you seen that sort of might complement the, the proposal that you have? I'm just bringing in, say, I know there's interest in uh, in in Belgium around a citizen's income or dividend. You know, that's part of a tax a tax and spend readjustment. Are there any things that you've seen which would help? Uh, reinforce the idea that we do need to make perhaps quite comprehensive shifts in taxing and, uh, and spending. Um, well, there's regulation, obviously. Uh, it'll also have to go hand in hand with new regulation. Um, um, in our report, for example, we give an example of the Japanese top runner program, where uh, the top runners in a certain product group uh, become the standard or the norm for the rest of the of the producers. That kind of uh, um, policy could also help. Um, and and really, it, it's going to be a, a reconsidering of of our social security system as well. I mean, the the fact that we're we're, we're going to have to um, support. Our every you know the population in every country to to develop their full potential. If we're going to look at our economies and our, lo our our laws from that perspective, I think a lot more will, will will change. I mean, if we make education more affordable because of the lower taxes on labor, it's going to change the way we educate children uh, or, or provide training to staff. Um, so. Um, it's 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 a big change that's going to go hand in hand with a lot of other changes, I think. Mm -hmm. And one of those changes might be, if we dare suggest it, uh, that some people are looking at. Well, why not tax resources more broadly, um, not just minerals, not just fossil fuels? How about how about taxing land or the rise in land value? This is a very old idea. Uh, does X tax have any view on? How far it might extend when you talk about taxing resources, 
rather than people. Because if you know, you go right back to the beginning of the history of economics, the big question for Adam Smith and others was, how do we stop the landlords dominating the market, for example? You know, the idea of a free market was to be free from economic rent, or free from landlords uh, distorting the price mechanism. It wasn't about government, it was about landlords. So, have you anything to say about where resources stop and start for X tax? What, what do you include in a resources tax and what do you not when it comes to resources that are fixed, you know, non-renewable, I presume? So in our toolkit, we took a very broad perspective on natural resources and consumption. So we included um, anything from pollution of water or air, um, but also if food production inputs, including land use, um, or um, land ownership, I mean, it, it, it could include that as well. Um, fossil fuels, uh, so there's a, there's a VAT, I mean, there's a lot of tax bases or, 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 or grounds for, for changing our tax system. And I think um, as we look at this, the, 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 the interaction between labor and environment, use of natural resources, it comes together in a circular economy um, that has you know, shaped our perspective um, and it also it helps us create a clear story so if we if we um, take it to I don't know financial transactions taxes etc um, it would sort of cloud that story so we don't yet we don't include it in our in our in our research and there's a lot of great people doing that uh, uh, thankfully so uh, we are focusing on uh, natural resources and labor, but natural resources, I think, in the broadest sense. Yeah, I think we'd probably say we, we agree from the Alan MacArthur Foundation that when we talk about tax shifting, it's usually away from renewables like labor towards non renewables like uh, fossil fuel resources and, and minerals. So we're probably working along the same lines there. Mm -hmm. um, but a broader question, really, because I, I think. I'm trying to contextualize this for people a little bit. There seems to be something happening around how we look at tax bases. There seems to be something happening around why we, we should shift taxes away from labor, particularly because labor contains some of the biggest resource waste streams possible. You know, a, an undeveloped talent, a, an unused talent is, is a major resource waste, of course. Um, Perhaps you just say a word or two about, I'm just switching now to Switzerland, where there is going to be a vote in at least one area about whether we should, um, you know, reform the money system. I mean, are you part of a coalition that looks at tax change more broadly, or, or is it really, as you've been trying to say, just around the resource, uh, resource picture? And do you think that that would be a good idea to be part of a, a broader coalition or do you think that weakens the message somewhat? Um, so ultimately it's all connected. I mean it's connected with um, um, you know paying fair taxes and, uh, and I mean everything is connected to everything um, but we do yeah have to make choices in, in what we research and how we bring the story because uh, this is quite a big story already, um, asking people to grasp the concept of shifting these taxes from A to B um, and what, what that means to us in terms of uh, resource use but also in terms of quality of life and uh, etc. Um, so ultimately everything is, is connected um, um, and, and very interesting. Um, for example, on the social power of the circular economy, we're trying to really bring those topics together. We've published a, a blog yesterday on, um, this, on the Circulate of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. One of the bullets in our um, Kumu is also uh, re referring to that piece. Um, so uh, we're really looking forward to explore that further uh, also with, with you guys mm -hmm. and see really how this works. Yeah. Can I just come in oh, just sure. very quickly, Ken? Um, just to remind viewers, we've got about 10 minutes left of this session with Femke Grutius of X Tax Project, uh, roughly speaking, uh, talking about shifting taxes from labor onto resources, uh, how that might be done and what that might mean. People have been putting questions in through the uh, Hangout app and on the ThinkDef webpage. Thank you very much for that. 
we'll make sure that those questions go to Femke in, the, in these last 10 minutes, get some more in if you could. Did you have a follow-up question there? Yeah, I did have just, just one really that I think that's really quite interesting. On the diff, uh, over these three weeks, we've had a number of speakers who've been talking about the role of machine learning and artificial intelligence and their impact potentially on employment. And uh, at least one commentator, this is on Wednesday, suggested that the link between work and wages is going to be broken anyway. Might X tax actually be after the fact or too late? Because um, you know the Martin School in Britain, uh, that uh, in Oxford, suggested that up to 47% of uh, occupations in the U.S. are vulnerable to artificial intelligence to changes. Uh, might then be nobody left to tax with income tax anyway, or, or not sufficient number. And um, are you wor at all worried that you know you might succeed in in, in shifting the taxes from 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 labour, but in a way, the problem has been overtaken by a massive increase in employment, unemployment. Well, yeah, and if we wait for that to happen, then there is no tax base anymore, indeed, on, on labour. Um, so, you know, the sooner the better that we shift to a different tax basis. But also, you see, that the development towards um, applying robotics and automation rather than people in, 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 um, in the workforce is driven by these high costs of labor. So um, as, as entrepreneurs are extremely inventive, they will always find ways to reduce their costs by lowering the, 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 the payroll. And that is what is happening at the moment. So the, the, the development towards automation and robotiz robotiz robotization sorry, isn't autonomous. It's caused by these financial incentives that are there at the moment. Mm. So um, actually we're part of, the, of one of the podcasts uh, of DIFF where we also explain about this more um, made to work. You can find it on the website. And um, uh, we've, we've ex been exploring this topic as well. Um, so the, the push to make people redundant is caused by the tax system. And if we are actually able to change these taxes, then I, my hope is that we can have a better balance between humanity and technology so that we can have quality of life increased because of technology, but not, you know, um, uh, recklessly substituting people f with machines because I don't think anybody wants that. So we need to have a vision on how that should work out uh, for, for the best for people, um, and 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 invest in um, in this tax shift to actually enable businesses to hire more people and not less. Yeah. Just a quick one from the screen now. Are you working with any organisations in the US? You know, have you? Uh presented your project to any US audiences? You know, what about across the pond, as they say? Um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to do that more, so please send us invitations. Um, um, because in, in the US, for example, the, 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 um, the percentage of labor taxes in total tax revenues is even higher than in Europe. So um, it, it, it could work out very well in the US as well. Um, so yeah, there are some groups that we're connected with, um, but um, um, we're very much open for new contacts. Okay, excellent. Colin? Yep, uh, I want to come in with a, a question. Um, this idea of taxing resources rather than labour, of course it's one that's been floating around for a while. On the Kumu graphic we um, point people towards, there's Eckhart Winson is talking about um, this, this kind of tax shift. So really, in, in 30 seconds, tell us, Femke, why is now the right time for this to happen? The world has changed, and it's about time the tax system does as well. And that's really the shortest I can put it. Excellent. Um, yeah. Excellent. Much shorter than 30 as well. Much shorter than 30, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that leaves us with dead air. <laughs> <laughs> But I could explain more about Eckhart Winsor because yes, there is a video on the, on the Kumu that uh, in which he explains in about two minutes uh, his vision back in 1994. And uh, what he did was he was an entrepreneur and really keen on changing the system because as an entrepreneur he was so much aware of this of these incentives to work with as few people as possible 
even if it costs more resources. So, um, but what he did, it, and, and we've been inspired by that, and, and this is what the XX project is, is based on, um, it's, it's more than just tax. It's about changing the rules of the game so people can flourish, and there's more economic growth based on human capital rather than on the extraction of natural resources. And that is about quality of life. It's not just about tax or economy. It's about quality of life in all its, you know, in the broadest sense possible. So that is what we've learned for, from Eckhart, and we're trying to convey that as well. Well, that's a lovely sentiment. And I want to give you one last chance, uh, Femke, to, to tell us how people might get involved in the, this movement to change the tax system. Have you got a, a tip, something people can do? Well, first of all, go to our Facebook page, please, on the Kumu as well, and uh, join, join the conversation there. Um, you can help by sharing this uh, story and talking to, it, uh, to, to people about it. Um, you can help us by um, bringing forward businesses that are willing to look at this topic and, and better un to better understand uh, what it does for them. Um, you, can, you can vote for a political party that supports this type of ideas. Um, and if you want, you can send us a note and uh, we can see whether you know, we can find out more ways to, to cooperate. Excellent. Lots of ways to prolong the conversa uh, conversation there then. Uh, thanks very much to Femke. Um, thanks to Ken as well for, for providing lots of questions for Femke in this session. And we've heard there about a tax shift that could potentially be worth billions in one country alone, in Netherlands alone, which is, isn't the largest of the countries in, the, in Europe either. So imagine what a, an effect it could have um, if it was right across the European Union. I think it's time to say goodbye with our hats. Yeah, goodbye to our hats. Yeah, so we are wearing silly hats today because it's the last day off the diff. Um, there are a couple more live sessions still to come up. I'll be back at five o'clock with uh, John Fullerton of the Capital Institute. He's worth listening to, isn't he, Ken? Yeah, definitely. One of my heroes. Awesome. So if he's one of Ken's heroes, you know he's going to be good value. Uh, so come back for that one. If you can't make it, or even if you can, uh, you should know there's something like 270 sessions to catch up on at thinkdiff.co. Most of them are now available on catch up. So you can go all the way back to when we started on November 2nd, start watching some brilliant sessions. Um, but here's the catch. What's the catch, Ken? The catch? Yeah, there is a catch. Oh, only for 30 days. Yeah, so oh, okay. the catch up is only there for 30 days. So get watching, folks. And um, that's your evening sorted out for the next month. <laughs> uh, so from us and cows and from Femke, somewhere in the Netherlands, it's a uh, Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Sylvia, for the hat compliment. And uh, we'll see you in the next session. Bye-bye. Bye, Julia.